Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The light of Christ is among us. The light of Christ is in this place. Welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You are a beloved child of God, and as such, you are welcome in this place. Whether you are visiting with us, whether you are a longtime member, uh, whether you've been worshiping with us for a, for a time, Fairhaven is a congregation that welcomes you. And if you are a guest with us today, we offer you a special warm welcome. If you are looking for a church home, we welcome you to uh, ask questions, be with us for a time, and um, perhaps this is the church family for you. And finally, our call to worship and opening song is a little bit different this morning. Um, there's a refrain that we're going to sing several times by itself. And there's a call and response verses, and I believe Carter is going to lead us in that. Um, and we're going to practice that, I believe. Yes, right now. Because the next thing after this is the call to worship. <laughs> so, what, so why don't we practice this? Um, and you should find an insert in your bulletin. And it's right in front of you. sang at Jesus' birth. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. The disciples sang a psalm on this path to Gethsemane. We can hear the angels of the whole earth singing hallelujah at the empty tomb. Angels and heavenly beings sing in the throne room of God. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. God's people continue to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs each time we gather to praise and worship. Hallelujah.
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Surprising and persistent God, you never give up on us. You seek us, call us, beckon us. You shine in every star, glow in every sunset, sing every waterfall, always trying to get our attention. You surround us with friends who care, families who love us in spite of our difficulties, and the church that carries us in prayer. When we turn toward your amazing grace, we discover forgiveness, healing, and hope. You give us a song to sing and a story to tell. We are blessed. Amen. Holy God, sometimes your song and your voice comes to us in the whisper of the wind, sometimes in the chirp of a bird or the laughter of a child, sometimes your voice comes in shouts of hallelujah and in cries of lament. But loving God, we thank you that you are always with us, speaking to our hearts and to our souls. So help us to hear and to listen for the music that is in the air. Amen.
Thank you, Judy Scripture. Oh, children, come on up and sit there. Yeah. <laughs> Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 90, 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in joyous songs and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with la la, with the la and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who, who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for his coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our second scripture reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now it's children's moments. If there's anybody out there I missed, come on up. Um, but I have a question for you. Um, when do you hear music in your lives? When you're at home, all right. So who who plays music? Is it you sing, or do you hear? Your Alexa plays it. Okay. How about you, Grace? <laughs> my my mom and my dad's car, and my TV. Okay. So mom and dad's car and TV. How about you, Mary? Uh, I go to a concert. Okay. So Mamie goes to concerts and hears music. Philip, do you hear music? Not, Not really. Not all right. Not when I'm home. Uh, okay. All right, how about you, Sharon? Um, I hear it on my Alexa. I make music, and I get it for free. All right, so hear, hear lots of music. How about you, Melena and Spencer? Both hear music, and I get it from Alexa. Oh, Francesco. I'm so sorry. Oh, Francesco. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. So when do you hear music? In the car. All right, car's a great answer. How about you, Melena? At school, all right, great. So there's music all around us, right? Right, and so today we're Music Sunday, right? So we're celebrating kind of God and praising God and worshiping God through music today, right? And so I started thinking about that and thinking about how music has been part of my life from when I was about your age, but in weird ways, right? So <clears throat> I grew up going to church Right, and so there was like church music, and it was very like imagine that red hymnal and pick every s song in it that was no fun, <laughs> and imagine it played straight on an organ, right? That was pretty much church music, except then this wonderful thing happened. We had a music director come in. She was our youth director, and she liked folk music and played that on a pian on a guitar. So all of a sudden there was folk music, right? And then I was playing the piano, and the, my piano teacher, she liked pretty much 
you know, classical piano music, really hard stuff like Chopin and things like that, right? And it was, some of it was wonderful, right? But I kind of learned a little bit about classical music through that, right? And then my dad, um, so my dad was very traditional, right? And so about the time folk music entered and music became like an anti-war protest for the Vietnam War, my dad was very suspicious of music. And then he heard like some eagles in there and my dad just didn't want us listening to that kind of stuff because he thought it was like gonna lead us into bad places, right? But we had a jukebox at church and so it had things like Elton John and Three Dog Night and all these wonderful groups on it and everything. So we had some pop music. And then I remember one year at Christmas, we were given this little record player Right, so you guys know the old kind of records, the vinyl, right? And strangely, given that my dad had this big distrust of music, it had like an Elvis Presley um, little song. <laughs> so we got to hear Jailhouse Rock and Hound Dog on that. And then um, my dad, like my sister was growing up, she was older than me, and so she liked John Denver and Peter, Paul, and Mary. So all of a sudden there was some Peter, Paul, and Mary mixed in, right? But my dad liked all the old music, like Bessie Smith singing God Bless America and, and, and a whole lot of music like that. But he also loved Ella Fitzgerald, right? Really loved Ella, right? And so there'd be some of that music in there, in the mix. And my mom loved Broadway musicals. She had grown up going to the theater and listening to musicals like South Pacific and The Music Man and um, The King and I and, and all of these wonderful songs through that. And then Disney started doing things like the Jungle Book with music in the Jungle Book, right? And there was music just everywhere, but it was different types of music, right? And I heard it all, right? So then I started working at a shoe store and we had advertising on the local radio station. It was KTLO Mountain Home. And on s Sunday, no, Saturdays, they did the country countdown. <laughs> I learned a lot of country music, some of it really awful, and if you if it comes on the radio now, it's like nails on the chalkboard still. Don't ask me about Juice Newton, and if you ever get a chance to listen to Juice Newton, let me know how you feel about that. Okay, but the point is, different kinds of music, right? And all of it had a message, right? People were singing about joy and pain and suffering and God and things that they wanted to change in the world, right? So when you listen to music, do you hear what the message is in the music? You have to Google it? Yes, yeah, sometimes. And sometimes you think, oh, I really like that song. And then you hear it and go, oh, that's not what I thought it was about. <laughs> um, but there is a message, right? And the wonderful thing about the music that we sing together in church is that the message can be different. The message can be crying out to God, asking for help. The message can be just celebrating God, right? And celebrating God's grace. And the message can be about kind of wishing for peace, right, in, in there. So today you're gonna hear a lot of different kinds of music. What I'd like you to do is listen to the words, listen to the spirit, listen to the feel of that, and say, what are we saying to God through this music? right? Um, because you can hear God and the, the message to God in all of that. So let's bow our heads and say a little prayer. Okay. Dear God, thank you for music. It is a wonderful way to connect, to lift our voices, to say the things out loud that we can't say in other ways. Um, we give thanks for the choirs and for all of the joy that comes with singing together and making something beautiful in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning. So before we start, I just wanted to say a couple things um, before we start, just to kind of give a prelude into our selection. Um, in Isaiah 61, 13, it says, God gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so with that scripture, I'm reminded that it doesn't matter what we're going through, what we're facing, you know, challenges that we have. But when you start praising and worshiping God, you find that that weight will start to lift and that victory is at hand. And so you have hope through that. So as we begin our next selection, we just ask that you join us as we sing every praise. <laughs> Praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one 
Amen and amen. Thank you, choir. <laughs> Choirs. Let us pray together. God, you are our Savior, our healer, our deliverer. And Jesus, you speak to our hearts and to our souls in music, in quiet stillness, in beauty in the depths of our hearts, you speak a word of love and grace. So thank you, O oh God, for the music that you place into our hearts and into our lives. And now, O oh God, as we think about your scriptures and what music teaches us, use me to speak your word to your people gathered here out of love for you and in love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. So if you don't like music, this is not a service for you. Um, thankfully, Fairhaven is a church that celebrates music and has um, good musicians all through in and three different choirs and different configurations of choirs. It is, it is truly a blessing um, as a musician to be a pastor of a church that, blesses, that celebrates music this way. So I don't think that I could be a Quaker who regularly attends unprogrammed worship. There is a lot to be said for spending time in silence and quiet, just listening for the Spirit, and I try to do that regularly too. But it is difficult for me to truly open my heart and worship without music. Leonard Bernstein, the great conductor, says, Music can name the unnameable and communicate the unknowable. Music, whether it is a hymn or a song or an anthem, it allows a deeper connection to God. It speaks beyond our intellect and it grabs our hearts with, and we make these lasting emotional connections. John Wesley, our founder, and his brother Charles would preach their beliefs, what Methodists believe and what Christians believe, and they'd write hymns to reiterate that theology. And it helps us to learn and to remember what it is we believe about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Singing is in the Methodist DNA. We used to be called the singing Methodists. I'm not sure whether that was a derogatory term or a descriptive one, but we are the singing Methodists. Thanks be to God. Psalm 98, which Christian read earlier for us, says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. That is certainly one of the blessings of music. It allows us to express our praise and joy for what God has done, is doing, and will do in our lives and in the world. The sanctuary choir sang a joyful noise, and the gospel choir just blessed us with every praise. Songs of pray, un, unadulterated praise just opened up our praise and our thanksgiving for all that God does in our world. Music helps us to bring praise and joyous praise to God. Edgar Winter writes, another musician, music is very spiritual. It has the power to bring people together. That is yet another gift of music. It draws people together, it builds unity, it builds community. Remember during the pandemic, where musicians around the world would come together in recorded pieces and, they would, and we'd, people would stitch those pieces together 
And it didn't matter whether you were in San Francisco or in Oslo or in uh, South Africa or in well, even Antarctica. I don't think anybody actually did anything for Antarctica, but you know, it, it could have, it could have happened. And we had music joining together to keep us together. Ask any choir member here, because any one of them can attest, as can an orchestra musician, a band musician, a chamber musician, that as we work together to share music, we build community together. As we work together to uh, praise God and to share God's music, we become a, a community of support for one another. Choirs and small groups and bands and orchestras, they become a community of people like family. And it's the music that draws us together. The men are going to sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms in a little bit. And that begins, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. Yes, you're leaning on the arms of Jesus, but so is everyone else in the community. That's why it's such a joyous fellowship. The bells are going to uh, play for us uh, Sayahamba. That's an Africa, South African freedom song. A song that drew people together, calling for freedom. Music gives us an opportunity to praise, and it draws people into community. Martin Luther wrote, Next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. Music is something that calls for and elicits faith within us. It reminds us that God is ever faithful and with us through it all. God is acting in our lives even when we don't notice God's presence in our midst. It enables us to place our hand, our, ourselves into the hands of the Savior, who then leads us and nurtures us and forgives us and raises us up. The women are going to sing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us in a little while. And that calls us to place our faith in Jesus, who is our good shepherd. And the combined choirs are going to sing, Rain Down, which is a song calling on the Holy Spirit to rain down love on all of God's people because, it's, because we know it's God who brings life. And when love is rained down on us and we are cared for by our shepherd, our faith grows. So music, we praise, we're drawn together. Our faith grows through it. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, a bird does not sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song. So what song has God placed on your heart today? Is it a song of praise? Is it a song of lament crying out for justice? And peace? Is it a song of desire for community and unity building up within? Is it a song that elicits faith? Is it a song that calls us to a deeper commitment with Jesus? The bell anthem is also a, uh, it's a combination of two songs, and you will, sit, you will hear within it um, the melody for sing when the Spirit says sing. So how about if we ring when the Spirit says ring? Or play our instruments when the Spirit says play? Sing. Sing for the joy of music. It, doesn't, it just has to be a joyful noise. It doesn't have to be in tune. Just sing for the joy of music. Sing to celebrate. Sing to learn. Sing to know God in a deeper and more profound way. Sing and let God speak in you and through you. Amen.
Thanks, man. come to that time in our service where we make our offerings before God. And if we want to continue having music like this, this is, music is one of the things that our offerings fund. Whether it be the purchase of music or the uh, salaries of musicians or the care of our instruments, your stewardship makes a difference. So let us give joyously to a loving God.
Let us pray. Holy God, as songs of love, peace, hope, and joy ring in our ears and flow from our lips, we offer praise and thanksgiving in your name for the many blessings in our lives. By your Spirit, may these gifts provide songs of comfort to a weary and troubled world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. seated. You know, it was, it was amazing when the combined choir got up, and I, it was almost half the congregation got up and was here. I remember when my dad was directing choirs as I was growing up and as a young adult, and his goal was always to have the choir in the main part of the sanctuary and the congregation in the choir loft. <laughs> I'll tell him tonight when I talk to him that we're getting close. We're getting closer anyway. Thanks be to God. So we come and we sing our hallelujahs. And we hear the melodies. And we have that opportunity to offer our praise to God and to listen for God's sweet voice speaking to our hearts and to our souls. May God continue to speak to us through music. And may you go forth from this place today singing a song so that the world knows that God loves them, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that the Spirit will never leave them alone. Go forth in the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 